Aren't you excited? This episode should be going up on <laughs> on Christmas Day. Uh, mm. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, too, for all you Jews out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Hanukkah passed. Oh, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's Christmas. We're all excited. We will hopefully have snow on Christmas Day. We can only hope for it. Uh, Big Brother, you're in Minnesota. Is there going to be snow on the floor? Um, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully it's as fast as it's by because that stuff can get out of here. Yeah. I don't know. I love snow. My, my dogs love snow. I love snow. Yeah, I'm, not the, I'm all about it. I'm sure those Minnesotans are not the biggest fan of snow. No, they are actually. That's the thing. They love it. Oh, they really? Stuff, like sugar on cereal. <laughs> oh. Mm, okay, some Cheerios with some sugar. Well, that's pretty good. Um, anyways, speaking of sugar, we got some spicy... Wait. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. We got some sugary news coming to you. Oh my gosh. Spicy, sugary, gingerbready news today. Yeah, even nutty. Nutty, indeed. All right, so the first thing I would like to talk about, did you guys watch that Nintendo <gasps> Direct about Super Nintendo World? Oh my goodness. Get your tickets now, Super Nintendo World. Oh. Yeah. I'm serious, dude. That looks... Way too good. That, why Why oh. is it an ocean away? Why does it have to be in Japan, well, man? They are, are going to have them in eventually Euro, you know, Nintendo World, and then America, Nintendo World. I hear that the next South Nintendo America. World is actually going to be in California. That's where they're looking to uh, the next one. Why California? Why can't it be? Why Those poor California? Midwestern people get nothing, you know? <laughs> they get snow. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, um, but yeah, Nintendo World was revealed. Um, you know, as it's full, we knew it was coming, and it had been like teased here and there. We saw some shots of it, but now we got a full walkthrough from who was it? Miyamoto. Shigeru Miyamoto. -san. Yeah, Miyamoto. He walked around and showed us uh, what all that, not everything actually, but just like parts that he wanted to show of Super Nintendo World. And oh my gosh, it's like every child's dream i mean you know you have disney world disneyland whatever i mean if you're a disney fan yeah but like those poor nintendo like the poor nerds out there they didn't have anything and here it is our time to shine but it's a whole world away head over yeah yeah it's but it's a whole world over oh my gosh mm -hmm. but you know what you know i've been thinking about this entire time is that I I dread what tourists are going to do to this magical land. If you are listening to this and you are planning on going to Super Nintendo World, don't be a jerk. Yeah. Pick up your trash. Mm -hmm. Don't vandalize anything. Don't jump on everything. I know Miyamoto was beating up things with that wristband <laughs> that he was wearing. Don't don't be that that guy. Oh, don't my, be my, that guy. My thing is um spitting gum on the sidewalk, you know? Like, you have those, like, stupid little spots of, like, dried up gum that just looks yeah. so distasteful. It's like, you know, if you're going to you're gonna chew gum and you're going to throw it out, just put it in the trash can. Gum is actually good for the environment. It helps keep the sidewalks and streets together. Oh, my God. You're <laughs> done. You're done. No, actually, in Disney World or Disney Parks, they actually do not sell gum for that reason. Good, good. You cannot find gum anywhere. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, I I think, okay, my favorite part of that whole uh, walk around that he went through was the cafe. Oh, my goodness. Dang. I can, I want to eat that food so bad. I know it'll be heavily <laughs> overpriced, but my goodness. <gasps> food. Yes, I, I agree. That I think it was a boba tea. Or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. That looked that looked just scrumchy. Oh my goodness! All the cute little desserts, and they're all so Mario themed. That I'm like, this this is my home. This is where I belong. I was kind of thinking it would be hilarious if they just sold mushrooms, and then like a five year old kid ate a bad mushroom, and then they're walking around the park on this like, mushroom ew, ew, trip. Ew, 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 ew. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do have to say, did you guys see that giant? Bowser, um, yeah. by the by the Mario Kart track or whatever that's gonna be. It's a ride. 
Ugh. That, I don't know, for, for some reason, that was the part that really stuck out to me the most, just that giant Bowser. Um, I've always I've always loved Bowser. I thought he's such a good, ha- uh, not hashtag, quote-unquote antagonist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. And so, you know, he does have his really scary moments. And so to be in the presence of such a giant <sighs> Bowser, that, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. rip your throat out with my teeth. Smoke and then catch on fire. Yeah, that would be super cool. Catch all the children on fire. Scare all the children away. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then there goes Peach. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. Oh my goodness. And then and then Daisy's like. <laughs> oh my gosh, so obnoxious. No, um, the, I think yeah, the rides looked pretty cool. Daisy. What was that, Brian? Daisy. No, who's Daisy? Nobody cares about Daisy. It's so true. Aww. Aww, poor I, I, I feel that. I'm with that one. Oh, that's so sad. It's a poser. No. So, so along with Super Nintendo World, uh, we, we were able to see that. Um, another game or franchise uh, that we wanted to talk about was Cyberpunk 2077. It came out, it was released. Um, What are people's thoughts? It's crazy because people that played that game on PC, all the PC gamers are like, oh, this game is awesome. There's a little few bugs with it, but they're able to just keep playing and get through it. But if you're playing this game on your PS4, your Xbox, it is trash. And yeah, people are getting refunds and uh, from playing this game. And PS4 and Xbox, they actually took it off their uh, their um, stores because it's just crap. That you know, they thought that the game was finished and it's just garbage. Which really stinks because that game was in development for like ten years. It's like you wow, have to wonder, what the heck were you doing in ten years? It's crazy. Like a Nintendo game, you know, the cycle of putting together a new Nintendo game is probably like five to six years, but it's like immaculate, you know, and then you have 10 years to put his game together and it's just like, I know it's like, oh, but the graphics are supposed to be huge, but still, at least give Nintendo the the props. They never put out like an inferior, you know. Yeah, very true. That's that's sort of what uh, Shigeru Miyamoto's uh, slogan is, like his his lifeblood message is, uh, Something along the lines of you can um, release a you know a thing early and it'd be bad, but if you wait a little bit longer, it'll always be good. You know, you have something that's always bad, or just wait a little bit longer and it'll always be good. Um, and you know, I I tend to agree with that statement. Um, but going along the lines of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I saw something earlier this week that said, you know, what does that say about AAA games in general? And that got me thinking about last week's Indie Direct that we got uh, from Nintendo where it was just mind-blowing. All those wonderful games that look as though they could be AAA games from studios that actually give a crap. They pour their life and soul into these games that may or may not sell, but they look so daggum good. And then you have a game like Cyberpunk 2077, or I'll even backtrack a little bit and say um, Fallout 76, where you have all of these major people working on these games, and they just turn out mediocre. So should there be like a, you know, do we, when it comes to AAA games, should we begin classifying them on a different set of standards now? I'm not sure, but maybe... I mean, for the most part, those games are going to be, you know, really, they're going to be priced more. Like an independent game, they'll sell those at a discount right off the bat. You won't get an independent game for 60 bucks. they will be at, you know, a different price point. So, and then with all the DLC and new things that you have to get with the AAA game, yeah, it should definitely be up to a higher standard. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think um, we're seeing a trend. I think it's all these uh, 76, 77, 78 is next. You know, Fallout 76, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077. So, so no game, don't do 78, or because then you're, you're cursed. You're yeah, doomed. you're cursed to fail. <laughs> oh, no. So the Mario's going to do Mario 78. 
and then it's just gonna be pretty cool. Oh, it's gonna be like the one one Mario game that just flops so bad that everybody's like, Screw Super like, Nintendo like, World! War like Wario 78, and it's like meant to be bad. It's meant to be like just annoying or something. Because nobody likes that. I, I don't know, but you did make a good point, Big Sister, about, um, you know, ha holding AAA games to a higher standard. It is weird that, you know, this game was 10 years alluded to and you know people were so excited about getting this game for so long and then disappointed that it was trash you know i think that what are you supposed to do uh, at this time now like what are the what's the company supposed to do how do you go forward i don't know and especially with companies that you hold in such high regard they have your childhood in your in your hand pretty much in their hand um right now my, my i'm just biting at the bits for the next Bayonetta 3 game by Platinum Games. And anything that I've seen in regards to the game coming out or the um, its production at the moment is that they're being very meticulous in putting it together. But at the same time, it's like, I, you know, I bet the people over at uh, CD Projekt Red were also thinking the same thing. So it's like, I'm biting at the bits. And they want to put out the best possible game that they can. Right. But ugh, is, should I, you know, have my fingers crossed? Should I have my uh, anticipation? You know, should I have my bar set high? I don't. I don't quite know. Either and, you way, know, I, I think that's what you know. You have beta testers that play these games, correct? Yes, and um, right now. Bravely Default 2 is having a second demo released. Uh, that is a game that I am eagerly anticipating. Mm -hmm. I am I am waiting for Bravely Default 2. Um, and it shows you the level of care that they are willing to go to to make a second demo. Um, the first one, in fact, they actually had um, the people that played it, just, you know, regular Joe Schmoes like you and me, they sent in their comments to um as it it's not square i think it might be square um whoever's developing the game stating uh this was good this was not good and they're like okay that is helpful to us to make a good product so they're releasing a second demo very soon if it's not already out and i think it's a great idea i think it's great yeah no i i appreciate you know wanting to wanting to take the time to make a good game but you know making that the game comes out good you know whenever it's playable for the uh customer um and the player that when they have it it's done right and it's well after all of like the demos and whatever getting all the kinks and bugs and whatever is out so I i'm okay with like them trying this process of trying to get the game to be as good as it can be and it may be taking a little bit longer so that whenever you get the product it's not crap like cyberpunk crap. yeah well that's that's all i have to say about that um i think we could spend a whole uh day talking about you know problems with the industry things that they need to do uh reform reformation oh um, but <laughs> but um i think we'll save that for another day but right now i'm just I, i've got a whole bunch of games that i'm ready for but i i do feel for all those people that were waiting for cyberpunk 2077 and it didn't come out the way that they wanted it to yeah happy for the pc users though <laughs> yeah i'm sure they're living it up i'm happy for you guys you're so great i'm once again, you come out on top. And who else I'm happy for is Mandalorian fans, Star Wars whoop, fans, whoop. Mandalorian season beep, beep, two. Beep, beep. What'd you guys think? Did you finish it? Finish yeah, it? It was so good. Was First so of good. all, let me let me quickly interject. No spoilies here. No spoilies. I know this is coming out on Christmas Day, but uh, we are not going to spoil anything. We will be talking a little bit about it, but we won't go into detail as to what happens. Right, right. Because Ileana is like but three I will, episodes I away. This. I will say this, and I I uh I forgot, and I didn't even know, I didn't realize it. Um, once you finish the show, watch through the credits. There mm -hmm. is an additional scene, uh, end scene credit thing. I yes. I don't know what oh man. Oh, watch the credits. 
like, yeah, at the very last episode. Oh, oh, episode okay, is, awesome. I'll, I'll remember to do it's that. Like, oh, it's like Marvel, where there's always that little bit at the end, the, the kind of teaser. So apparently you have to watch that. It's apparently it's super, oh. cool, super important. Check it out. And it, it it's is supposed to, you know, yeah. It is especially important and like, wow, like jaw hit the floor for people that grew up with Star Wars, like in the 80s and 90s. Um, when you see that, you're like, but even my even my daughter, too, you know, are, they love the original trilogy. They were like, oh, this is so cool. This is awesome. So. It's, uh, you know, those guys over there, they're doing good work, you know. <sighs> Man, I, I want to be Cara Dune for Halloween, and I think, that's I think who, you said that, uh, who, uh, Ella wants to be. Yeah. Yeah. really? We'll, wow, we'll that's go, awesome. We'll do it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is a great show. I can't wait for the spinoff. Um, this does not spoil the show, but there is a Boba spin-off. Fett's yeah, spin off. Same Yeah. Uh same thing and I'm really looking forward to that as well. Um they they end this series the best way they can. I don't think they could have made it any better. Um so for those of you that haven't seen it, you are in for a treat. Indeed. And honestly, you got to put it out to me. I've been thinking about it. Mandalorian is the best Star Wars content. Since the original trilogy, I agree. Really Ooh, is. I don't know. I would have. I would ha- say some people would argue with you saying that the Clone Wars, the animated series, they are completely wrong. <laughs> I have some friends who listen to this Star podcast Wars. who are going to be ding. mad. They're going to be mad. <laughs> no. Quickly, swipe away or, or. Mandalorian is as good. It is in the same world as the original trilogy. Everything else is fine. It's good. I'm not saying it's bad. Right. But The Mandalorian is must-see Star Wars content. It is pure Star Wars. I And I think that the, that's what the interesting about Mandalorian is. I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars. I can appreciate, like, uh, what it does for film, what it's done for movies, and the world that has been built around just like that first movie, you know, uh, what George Lucas created and then other people have come into the team. So I can appreciate that, but I'm not a fan of Star Wars. However, Mandalorian has like, you know, got me by my wrists or my bootstraps. I don't know how people say stuff, but oh my gosh, it, it's so good for everybody. I feel like it's got action and it's funny. I love the dynamic between the child and uh, Mando, so good. And I don't know, the, the episodes don't feel extremely long either. So I feel like I can just throw it on and it it's not, some of the episodes are 42 minutes, you know, whatever, 40 minutes long and they don't seem like it. I feel like I'm so immersed in it. Do, you know what I mean? Wesley gets mad whenever there's an episode that's like 35 minutes. He's like, oh, I'm being <laughs> dipped. A short one, dang it. Dang it! But it's so, but, jam- it's so jam-packed with action and giddy yes. that, you know, it's like, what a treat, you know? It yeah. really is a treat. I think that is a good word to use. It is a treat. Let us know in the comments what you think. Who is better, uh, Mandalorian or everything else? I don't know. I, I gotta go Mandalorian. I, I'm, I don't care about the other Star Wars as I have with Mandalorian. And I think it's just... The way that it, it's filmed, I I love some of the cinematography in it. It is beautiful, and some of the action shots, and I love the characters. I'm getting you know into the child and Mando's dynamic. I I love the frogs and the fish eggs. I yeah. love it. I, it's so funny. I, I knew those were things that um, happened, but watching it in the show as a whole was like too good. It never got old, you know. Wesley was reprimanding the child. He's like, you put those eggs down. Those don't belong to you. Don't you eat that. <laughs> put that back. Can I, can I tell you guys what my favorite Star Wars thing is? Lay it on me. Lego Star Wars. 
Lego Star Wars is good. Leg Lego Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, not just not just the game. You should go and watch the shorts that are on. Uh, I think they're on Disney Plus. Uh, they are absolutely hilarious. Um, they just put out a Lego Star Wars holiday special. Um, and you can, it's pretty much every bit of Star Wars movie wrapped up in like 30 minutes. It is hilarious. They do it so cleverly too. Poor, poor Darth Vader. Like, he's so abused. <laughs> um, like, it's just silly. Go watch it. That's a little plug for Lego holiday special. Okay, speaking of holiday, Ileana. KT. Today, I went out to a local Greek restaurant and uh, I got us some baklava. I see it. It's in front of me, and it looks delicious. Yes, I've been waiting to eat this uh, delicious, decadent thing all day. Yeah, I'm it so looks ready. really yummy. I for I actually forget what baklava tastes like, so I'm uh, ready for my senses to be heightened. Yes, so I'm, I'm just tapping my fork into it, and already the flakiness of that, well, flakes, they are just, <laughs> like, really crackling. And yeah, the, the well, let's see if my oh. mic will pick it up. I think I just heard it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, phyllo phyllo dough. Um phyllo dough and it's got the honey and uh almonds. Oh wow, that's a good flavor. Mm. Very cinnamony. Mhm. Mm mm. It's not overly sweet. No. Wow. Not as not as so good. Um very flaky. Mm -hmm. Um, really, it just tastes, it's not crunchy. Um, yeah, it's nice and moist and soft almost. Yeah, and it's got a, it's got a good nutty flavor to it as well. <clears throat> I wish I had, uh, some black coffee. Yes, black coffee for all you black coffee haters out there. <laughs> Me. I'm a cream and sugar person. I've been hearing uh, some hilariously negative things about me drinking black coffee. Listen, it's delicious. Give it a try. Just do it. Do it, guys. No, don't click away. Don't click away. <laughs> Cream and sugar, don't worry. We have two people here. <laughs> um, I would say for me it's a little sweet or maybe rich. Rich is a be uh, better flavor, I think. So maybe the black coffee would um, balance it. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But – Good, good job, um, those at, um, I wish they had a better name. You guys need a better name. Um, it's just called Greek Deli. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> In Gainesville, um, but you guys do a great job. Yeah, yeah I, I've been there before, and I've had their um, other food, and it was delicious. Um, but this dessert is very tasty as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, Brian, now it is your turn. What have you got for us at the table? Brian's streaming pick of the week. The, it's almost the end of the year. 2020 is almost done. Hallelujah. We can move on to 2021. But 2020 Amen. did give us one good thing. If you are a fan of The Office, it has always been good to know that you can always watch The Office on Netflix. It's always there. You never, it's like, it's like a dog. It's just always there. It's your best friend. You turn your head, it's just <laughs> there. But unfortunately, with NBC having its own streaming service called Peacock, uh, the office is now moving away to Peacock, so you no. won't be able to find it on Netflix. So only a few days left. Get your office binge before you have to start paying it. Literally, if you go on Peacock, the first and second season of The Office will be free. But the third season, the best season of The Office, you will have to pay a monthly subscription, uh, you know, other than Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon. You're going to have to pay charge to watch The Office. HBO Max. That everybody loves. That's ridiculous. HBO Max, thank you. So get in your office fix before you can, before it's too late and it's gone. Uh, watch the Christmas episodes. There's a ton of them. Um, and just, yeah, the office will be missed, truly. Darn you, Peacock. Darn <laughs> you, Peacock. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. So, speaking of Christmas um, episodes, we're going to go into movies. Christmas! <laughs> 
Gremlin movies. So not episodes. They're gone. Movies. It was a good transition. It's flawless. Yeah, beautiful. Don't click away. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking about some of our favorite Christmas movies, live action followed by animation. Who wants to go first? Let's let the big bro go first. Big I'll bro, go. lay I'll down. Go first. I want to go first. So first off, I don't care if you don't like black and white movies. Everybody should take the time to watch black and white movies. Okay? Mm-hmm. You tell them. Preach, bro! You know what you sound like? You sound like a little turd, okay? <laughs> it's a wonderful life. You it tell him. One of the best, is one of the best, not only Christmas movies, but one of the best movies you will ever see in your life. Okay? It is up there. It is a top ten movie to see. It is a great film directed by Frank uh, Capra and starring Jimmy Stewart. It's a great inspirational movie set at Christmas time. You have to watch it. It is a tradi- an annual tradition. Some of the best memories of uh, Christmas time with our families and watching this wonderful life. Give it a shot. It's so good. Uh, really quick, next would be Polar Express. Polar Express is so cool because mm-hmm. it is a scary Christmas movie. That movie is actually haunting. It's mm-hmm. super dark. It's, it's really good. It's, it's uh, the movie is taken right off its pages uh, from the same children's novel directed by Robert Zemeckis, the guy that did Back to the Future and uh, Roger Rabbit. So it's like a, it's a total rush of a movie. You go, feel like you go on an entire journey watching Polar Express. And then uh, Home Alone Home Alone's script is endlessly quotable. I quote it all year long. It is, again, one of the best things. I call him a filthy animal all year long. Yeah. Take a bath, hippie. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I oh, I love uh, the Polar Express. It it may, like, animation style has, like, aged not well. I still think it's awesome. I think that little nerd kid, Mandark. It's one of the best, scores. <laughs> one of the best like, music scores ever. Oh, uh, oh, of course. It's so good. Yes, I think that Mandark kid is my favorite because we all know one of the, we all know one of those. I think at one point we all were that Mandark kid. <laughs> hey, what you do that for? <laughs> yeah. All right, big sister, give us yours. Movie, live action followed by animation. The train went on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I I'm just gonna talk about one live action movie, and um, it is the Muppet Christmas Carol. That is my favorite live action Christmas movie. Um, it Michael Caine is divine in this movie. Um, he just really so owns up. So oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it's so good. Uh, Wesley and I watch it either on Christmas Eve or the day of Christmas every single year. It's my favorite. Um, the music is so good. It's uh, I, I don't know why, but I really like the dynamic between Gonzo and Rizzo. I think they're hilarious, and they're they break the fourth wall. Yeah, I know they're narrating it, but they break that fourth wall. Maybe it's like a fifth wall. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> where, you know, they, they just make these little quips here and there that are just hilarious. Um, classic. Classic, classic. Um, but for hey, animated... Is it safe to say that... Wait, is it safe to say, is the Muppet Christmas Carol the best Muppet movie? Ooh! That is a tough one. Um, I actually am very... I, I really like... The Muppets, the the first one, and then the newer one with Amy Adams. I think they did a very good job yeah. of. I mean, it's it's really hard to say. I I haven't seen a Muppet movie that I just outright did not like. We're Marley and Marley. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, that's another song that Mom sings year yep, round. All the time. <laughs> Just unprovoked. We'll just. She's making scrambled eggs in the morning. We're Marley and Marley. Ah! 
Shout out to mom. Um, so my my animated pick is a Charlie Brown Christmas. I've always been a huge fan of uh, Peanuts, and so it's really it, it's such a classic. I'm not I'm really not going to touch too much about it because um, there's not a whole lot to say other than. It's a charming story about a little boy just trying to find the meaning of Christmas, and he finds it. And it's it's heartwarming, especially for folks that you know just feel like they just get beaten up left and right. You know, life does not throw them a bone every you know all the time. And so, when you find that little bit of joy, you hold on to it. Along with the Peanuts uh, movie, the the Christmas Peanuts movie. I also have to put the recent Peanuts movie, the one from a couple of years ago. There's something beautiful about that film. It's very wholesome. It it has some of the elements of the Christmas film, which is why uh, Wesley and I watch it every year. But there's something so wholesome and beautiful about poor Charlie Brown and his... He just wants to be noticed. He just wants to be special. He wants to be unique. But he keeps getting held back. And But in the process of him being held back, he's helping out those in need. So he's putting people before him. And it's so beautiful. And there's a side story of Snoopy uh, writing his story of the Great Baron. Or the Red Baron, pardon me. The Red Baron. And it is so cute. This whole movie is just so cute, and it's it's so wholesome. I know I'm saying that word a lot, but it really is wholesome, and and that's probably that's part of the reason why it's one of the movies that Wesley and I watch every year for. For my Christmas movie pick, uh, live action, I'll probably have to go. Well, Brian stole mine, so um, I'll probably have to go with a Christmas story. During this time of year, it shows on t- on TV so many times, and so. I've seen it so many times over the years and, you know, I've grown to love and appreciate that movie for all that it's worth. And, you know, it it's just such a silly film. Every little scene is just hysterical to me. So, um, A Christmas Story. And then for animation, I have to give it to Klaus. I know it came out last year and, you know, there's probably better options, but I don't think so. Klaus, oh, it is such a beautifully made movie animation the story everything it is such a good family heartfelt movie to watch i implore you all to watch this movie if you haven't already it's on netflix it's it's amazing just the story the animation style i don't know what those animators were on but they created something absolutely beautiful um please go watch it if you have time um, it's family friendly so everyone can watch it and it's the origin story of santa claus told in the most like funny silly way possible but also really beautiful and tear-jerking like some of the music matched up well with the animation and the story it's like oh gosh I'm all of a sudden crying (laughs) so if you haven't seen that movie what are you doing go watch that movie definitely my favorite animated Christmas movie of all all right so what about tv so um everybody remembers the hey arnold uh Christmas episode where uh Mr. Wynn is really, really sad because when he left Vietnam during the Vietnam War, he had to escape, and he had to give up his daughter to a, an American GI on a helicopter. I mean, it's like such heartbreaking stuff for a, a kid's, you know, Saturday morning TV show. And Hey Arnold goes on this journey with uh, Harold and Helga to find Mr. Wynn's lost daughter. It's a uh, totally tug at your heart streak, uh, heartstrings. A uh, great classic. Arnold, I have not seen my daughter in so long. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Mr. That's Wynn, sad. come on, man. For my animated television uh, pick, I'm going to go with the Rugrats Passover episode from many years past. Uh, I always thought that it was such a cool episode, uh, not just because of the content, but because you actually don't see any Hanukkah related anything on TV nowadays. You, you don't see a lot of that, especially for children's television. So I always thought it was really cool. Uh, what it's about is uh, the, the pickles are going to celebrate 
uh, the Seder dinner with Dee Dee's parents. And hilarity ensues, and Boris and the kids get trapped in the basement. And so Boris is telling the children the story of Passover and what it means and the story of Moses and how he uh, pulled the, not pulled, how he rescued the kids from uh, the kids. Oh my gosh. Get me out of here. How Moses rescued the Hebrews from Egypt, from slavery, and uh, that whole thing, and and Pharaoh Angelica, that, if you remember Pharaoh Angelica, then yes, you did have a good childhood. You're, you're welcome. Um, but that's what's happening in the story. Meanwhile, the adults who are just kind of like, eh, we don't really care, they get trapped in the basement one by one as well, or whatever it was, basement or attic, and... Boris continues to tell the story, and it just keeps getting better and better, and Pharaoh Angelica just keeps taking over, and she's so horrible, and finally, the Hebrews make it. Spoiler alert, the Hebrews make it. <laughs> All right, and um, that is my pick for television. For me, it's gotta be the SpongeBob Chris- Christmas episode. Get it? Yeah. It's so good! I don't know why it's SpongeBob, but it's so funny, and it's so... You know, you want Squidward to appreciate Christmas. You want him to, you know, Sandy's telling SpongeBob about Christmas and SpongeBob's getting so excited. Patrick's trying to write his letter. He keeps breaking the 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 paper. <laughs> and um after, you know, Santa doesn't, you know, come to like, Bikini Bottom, Squidward, you know, his heart grows and sees how sad Spongebob is. And he's there for him and sells everything, or not sells, but like gives everything out of his house. And then everybody else, you know, just, he, he ends up with an empty house. Squidward's got <laughs> such a big heart. Oh, it's so beautiful. We, we just love, you love to see it. And my second one would be the Powerpuff Girls Christmas movie or special. I don't know. Do you guys remember that growing up? Oh, I that was such a good one. I remember that. It was with um, Princess Morbucks, and oh, she's being yeah. a brat. Oh, yeah! I got you now! Yeah! That was such a good, like, special. I think yes. it was longer than an episode. I think it was an, not a movie, but, like, a longer special. And I loved watching that as a kid every Christmas because I loved the fight between the girls and Princess, and then... Mm-hmm them putting a uh, Santa putting her on the naughty list and you can't put me on the naughty list oh my god I will buy you <laughs> it's so good and Daddy! every time I, I feel like I want to watch it in my adult years every year because it's it was so good in my childhood that I I've always loved it such a good one oh, man the the memories come flooding back in they do they do whoa baby but that wraps it up for um, this Christmas edition. Yeah, this Christmas edition. We talked oh, about pretty that. pretty much everything. I, I'm satisfied. Are you? I am I, satisfied. I'm not satisfied. We need to sing we need to sing the 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 um, who song. Far room fall. No, no, I'm thinking we need to sing ca- uh, Carol Bell's Christmas way. Christmas, Christmas, bah, who worries? Bring the ham and Why are you sound like the, the gingerbread cheese? man from Shrek? Like the, the, the gingerbread man? Yeah, why do you God sound like bless gingy? us, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to hear like uh, Carol of the Bells. Our calabell swings and our bells all seem to say, blow cares away! Yeah, that's what it's, I'm talking about. Ding dong, <laughs> ding dong. Oh my gosh, yes. I love if you it. Guys, if you guys want a good laugh, and I mean a solid good laugh, look up Toad singing um, All I Want for Christmas is You, that oh my Mariah gosh, Carey it's so song. Good. You will not be disappointed. Okay. Or um, Toad singing Let It Go from Frozen. Or How Far I'll Go from Moana. Yes. Uh, you know what? Just, just look up Toad singing. It's it real good. It'll warm your heart and, uh, you know, destroy your eardrums. 
Yes. Yes, yes, um, yes. But what won't destroy our eardrums is hopefully what we're talking about next week. Soul. Oh, yes. It comes out Christmas Day. You know I'm going to be all over that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hope it's not a bummer like I'm thinking it's going to be. I hope that I am going to be pleasantly surprised. It's not going to be a bummer. I hope I, not. I just know but it. it's I not going to. I don't feel like it's going to be good. I, I think it, I, my heart is set on it being good. My soul is ready. So are they going to be doing this as like how they did Mulan where you have to pay an extra like 30 bucks on top of your subscription with Disney Plus to watch it? I guess we'll find out. Oh, I do not man. Know. That sucks. I do not. But know. we'll be talking about that. And also, if um, that, for uh, culturally speaking, if it, you know, which one represents better, Coco or Soul? I think both of those have very good, heavy cultural aspects in them uh, that Pixar is like kind of trying to touch on in their later movies. They did that with um, Brave, with like the. Scottish. The Scottish. Yeah, the Scottish things, I, which I think they handled fairly well. So I want to see if they can handle Soul um, like they did Brave and Coco. So and we'll I see. will be the judge of that. I, you know, being around jazz music and listening to it and, and uh, being around it for years and, and knowing so much about jazz history and and respect. It's, a, it's all about respect for jazz music. Mm -hmm. um, I will be the one to test it. So... Let's see how they do. Yeah. Ding, ding. And um, also next week, we're going to be talking about the top 10 games to come out of 2020. And what we are looking forward to for 2021, video game-wise and movie-wise. There's a lot to come out for, for next year. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll briefly touch on the cool presents we got for Christmas, if it was anything worthwhile, or if we're like, my family is the worst, they didn't get me anything I like. I'm your family, you jerk. She didn't get me anything I like. What a I'm going to tell it to her face. What a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, gang, that is going to do it for this session of Bump That. Bump That. I hope bump so. that. I if hope you do so not like this that, episode, please. if you do not like this episode, click the dislike button, or if you like it, click the like button. Yeah, Either be way, truthful, man. Yeah, yeah. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with us. If we yeah. suck, we already know it. So <laughs> <laughs> you're just telling us what we already know. We appreciate you listening to us. Uh, yeah, Banter. we appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Bye. 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 Bye.